Going hot. What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai, and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you guys are all staying safe out there and having a great Sunday so far. Today we're talking about a topic that I feel is very important, especially in today's world. We are of course talking about body armor and with everyone kind of having preparedness on their minds, I think this is something that needs a little bit more light shed upon it. No matter who's selling it, what shape and size, price points varying high and low, I believe that everyone should have access to some sort of body armor if they choose to. There are of course a ton of different options out on the market right now and today we're looking at the one that I'm wearing specifically. So hopefully you guys can sit back and relax a little bit while we take a look at the new Safe Life Defense Flexible Rifle Armor System. For many years, people have been told that no soft armor will defend against a rifle threat, and that's obviously changing right now. The Safe Life Defense Flexible Rifle Armor System, or FRAS for short, feels and conceals just like soft armor, but it's rated to defend up to 223, 556, and even 762 by 39. This is going to provide the wearer with full front, rear, and side coverage while still being lighter than most traditional rifle plates, coming in at around 16 pounds. The FRAS panels fit inside both their concealed vest and their TAC vest, which you're looking at right here. And both of those come with a cooling mesh liner, which allows you to wear this thing for an extended amount of time. I have actually worn one of these vests for three days straight, and if you want to check that out, you can click the link right up there in the corner. Just like their other carriers, they are made out of a water-resistant polyester, and there are also two hidden pockets in the front and rear for additional rifle plates. There's a hell of a lot more technical specs and sizing charts found over on their website, so if you guys want to check that out, you can find a link in the description down below, as well as a 10% discount code. Alright guys, we are out here on the range now to test out the FRAS system. As you see it right here, I have it in the concealed vest. I have this thing hanging from my regular target stand, so I'm going to try to be pretty particular with where I'm placing shots throughout this testing. Right behind the top here is the very hard steel head. I'm going to try to avoid that area as much as possible. The reason for that being is because as a bullet strikes an area like this, that energy is going to be dispersed through the rear, so if it hits a hard surface like steel, that's gonna give it a higher chance of failing a little bit earlier than it should. Obviously getting hit with a round is going to hurt, but the human body is soft, so it's not going to push that energy back into the vest from the inside. We're starting the testing off pretty easily first with a nine millimeter round. I'm gonna be shooting back from about 15 yards and I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to stop a ton of nine millimeter. So here we go, you guys are gonna be looking right over my shoulder and I'm going to sort of aim for the lower left side of the vest. Looked like a good shot to me, let's go check it out. Solid entry exactly where I was aiming. It's honestly a little hard to tell, but right there is the nine millimeter hole. And on the inside here, no marks at all. I'm not even gonna pull this thing off of here. To inspect it any further, nine millimeter seems to be no threat to the frass. Now speaking of things that I believe are going to be pretty easy for the frass to stop, we got 300 blackout here. This is a 220 grain bullet. I'm gonna put this one right on the right lower side of the vest and should be no problem. Let's go take a look. Again, we had a good entry point. Right here, I'm actually in line with the wood, which is not ideal, but let's check out the inside. Absolutely no issue for now. No deformation or anything. There's just a little bit of wood chips from the two x four. Now we're about to get into the interesting stuff. How about a 5.56? This is a 16 and a half inch full rifle length barrel. And I'm gonna be shooting some Fiocchi 55 grain out of here. They say that these vests, the frass system, will stop green tip ammo. So in theory, it should not have a problem with this at all. I'm gonna to try to put this one about dead center.
All right, this is the one that I was curious about, one of the most common threats around today, so let's see how it did. Looks like we have entry right here, about the center where I was aiming, and it feels like it worked. Dead center, right in the middle, no deformation at all. It didn't even break the label or anything. That is pretty damn impressive, but we got some more. How about some 7.62 out of an AK-47? I'm gonna try to put this one up a little bit higher than the 5.56. Let's see how that did. Really nice shot there. The entry, actually kind of hard to see. And is there an exit? There is none. It looks like we got sap from the 2x4, so there's obviously a lot of force going through there, but the label is still all intact, and it really doesn't feel all that deformed yet. Now before we go on full destruction mode with this thing, I want to pump a few more rounds of each type in here just so we have an understanding of where this thing will actually fail. We're going to start again with 9mm. I'm going to put four more rounds down to bring us to a total of five. I'm gonna try to be fair and not hit in the exact same spot every time, but I'm still gonna try to keep them in the lower left. This again should be no problem. I started working out this side over here because the protection comes all the way around. One of the big perks of a vest like this versus a plate carrier. I've actually done a video in the past testing out one of their regular concealed vests and this thing stopped a ton of nine millimeter. If you wanna see exactly how much, check it out up in the corner. So without a doubt in my mind, all of the five shots are right here. Not even a mark. 300 black again, lower right side. This again should not be an issue. Packed them in over on the right side here. We're starting to get a tiny bit of bulging on this side because those are some big old bullets and they're bunching up in here. I can actually feel the rounds inside of here. They're just all bunching up there, but none of them made it through. 5.56 five, time again. I'm gonna keep this around the stomach area and try to keep it as centered as possible. Again, I wanna give it a fair chance. I don't wanna stack the rounds on top of each other. Not that I could actually do that, but we're pretty close here. That is now five rounds of 5.56 five, into the frass, all right around here where I mentioned. Again, we have a little bit of deformation because all these bullets are transferring a ton of energy in here. The wood is starting to actually tear up the vest, but don't believe any made it through. Now this is where I believe we will start to see some failure. We got 762, it's coming out of there fast. It's a pretty large round. And I'm going to try to disperse these around the chest area as much as possible because when they are grouping up, it's gonna cause some failure. Let's see how it does. There's four more. Uh-oh. I put some of those closer together than I thought. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see how it did. Damn it. <laughs> Unfortunately, exactly like I said, I did not want to do. I put it right on top of that steel. This right here is what happens when that energy is dispersed back. I'm gonna pull this off and see if it actually made it through. Yes, it did. Actually, this right here, now that I look at it, that was from the last 5.56 shot. So I had four shots of 5.56 right around at this central area here. That started breaking up the frass material in here, and then that last one did actually send it through and out the back. Now, if I had to guess, I would say one of the 762 may have made it through there. Yeah, we actually have some bullet fragmentation right up here, which was actually pretty close to the edge. 
it must have sort of splintered off around and caused that. We've got a little bit of lead right here. So now we've stopped five rounds of nine millimeter easy, no problem at all there. We stopped five rounds of 300 blackout, no issues at all there. We started breaking up the lower outside portion of the vest there, so we moved to the center for 5.56. Five, we got four shots down before the frass started taking a toll and we had one pass through. Same thing for the 7.62. We had about four shots right up here, fairly close to each other, and then we had one that eventually made it through. Sort of deflected off the side into the back, but it did not make it all the way through the back. Now I have repositioned the vest over there on the stand and what we're gonna try to do now is really test it out with something that this is really not rated for. I'm trying to give this thing the best chance possible. I've repositioned it that way there is no hard contact between the wood or the steel and the actual vest. So it's sort of hanging loose there and I believe this may make it fall. We've got the SCAR 17S in 308. Now from the last time I brought this thing out, these iron sights were not sighted in, not super accurate, but I'm gonna try to put one down right around this area on the vest. It seems to be the most intact out of all of the testing that we've been doing on it. Let's see how it does. Going hot. Well, it didn't fall. I can tell from here that there is a little bit of a bulge and deformation. Now let's go see what that did. I'm surprised that didn't fall. It actually did hit where I was planning, right in this area. There's a lot of deformation. That would obviously hurt really bad. That's like a softball size of impact there. But now that I look at it, I don't know if that made it through. All right, I'm actually very curious to see what's going on inside of here. Again, you have that huge bulge here. This shot up here is from the 762. I'm gonna pull this out. You can hear all sorts of stuff jingling around inside of here. This is horribly deformed, and obviously you would be in a lot of pain and on the ground if you got hit by a 308, but I don't think it made it through. Another thing that I have not actually tested was the stab and slash proof. This thing will obviously stop a punch, even from someone like Chuck Liddell. Oh. 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 Okay. Yeah, see, I got punched by Chuck Liddell. <laughs> it looks like we've stopped the 308. Man, there is a lot going on in this thing. While we are sitting here, one last thing we can do is obviously a stab test. You are not gonna be able to stab through this as I'm destroying my Chris Reeves Sabenza. Real quick side note. After further inspection of this thing, I actually took it apart even more than I did out on the range. And I found out a little bit more about how this works. So this is the front panel, which was all shot up. And it's kind of hard to tell in here because there's so much stuff going on. But essentially this entire vest is made out of these little ceramic tiles. These things are all sort of meshed together in a way in front of the Kevlar, which gives it the ability to stop a lot of these rifle rounds. Now, when I took a further look at where that 762 made it out the side and that 556 made it through the middle. I believe what happened was I broke one of these tiles and it broke in such a way that it sort of left a vulnerable opening there for other shots to go through. But as you can see, there is still a ton of this ceramic tile up here that is not busted up. So if my groups weren't as close as they were, they were all within about an inch of each other, then it probably would have stopped a little bit more. The 762 that popped out on the side here actually never made it out the back of the front panel. It sort of deflected in a way that the bullet got stuck in the Kevlar layers in the back here, so it never actually would have made it out the back of the vest. Now, since we still have a relatively fresh panel in the rear, let's actually cut one of these apart to get a better look at the inside. So here you have a panel that is much more intact, of course. You can hear a little bit of that ceramic because one shot did make it through the front. 
I'll first peel away the front layer. Now here we have a good look at the front of the panel. So we have this layer of some sort of material. I'm not exactly sure what that is. And then here we have that first ceramic layer. This is super cool. I'm glad I did not overlook this in the end. So obviously when you compare something like this to a ceramic tile plate that you would put in a plate carrier, you're only getting coverage up to here, but with this, you're getting way more coverage on the ceramic and the way that they're engineered allows it to flex like this, which is so cool. This actually reminds me of those tiles that are pre like stitched together that you can just throw grout up on the wall and throw them into place. So it allows it to flex around your body. You can make like a full circle with it just like this. And that is what keeps you protected from rifle threats. And then behind this tile layer, of course, we have some more Kevlar, lots of it. And that is what makes this vest really cool. So back to the regular video. So there you guys have my testing results of this new Frass system, and overall I would say that I'm pretty damn impressed. I've been wearing this tack vest version of the Frass system for, I would say, maybe a total of 24 hours since I received it, and it's slowly starting to break in and it's getting a lot more comfortable. Just like the concealed vest that I wore for three days straight, the more you wear this stuff, the more comfortable it's going to get, and I think over time this could actually be something that police officers, military, law enforcement guys could definitely wear for a full shift. Now let me push you guys back a little bit just to give you a little bit more of a comparison. Here I have a pretty standard ceramic plate. This would be put inside of a plate carrier. And with the protection of this, compared to the full side protection of something like this, as you can see, I'm getting quite a bit more coverage out of the Safe Life Defense Frass system. If I line these plates up at the top, I'm getting just a tiny bit more protection over here in the armpit area. The protection on the bottom might be coming a little bit lower, but then you have this full side protection that when worn properly will mesh together on the sides and it goes all the way around to the back panels. Now sure you could set up a plate carrier with some side panels on it, however this stuff gets very heavy after a while. The ceramic version that I have here is a little bit lighter than some AR500 plates, but if you add all of that stuff up together, front and rear protection with the sides, chances are it's going to be a lot less comfortable than something like this. Everyone, of course, has their own tastes and preferences, so it really comes down to whatever you wanna wear. But like I mentioned in the beginning, I believe that this is something that should be accessible to everyone, and now, thanks to companies like Safe Life Defense, it is. Maybe something like the Frass system is a little overkill to you. Maybe it's out of your price range, coming in at $1,600 for a full, complete vest setup like this. If you're more of an average consumer and you want something with a little bit less of a rating, then you could go to some of the other vests that I've also tested in the past. Here's a quick spoiler alert to those of you who have not seen my Safe Life Defense Concealed Vest video. That soft armor stopped over 100 rounds of 9mm from about 10 yards away. And that vest is going to be even a lot more affordable than something like this. So maybe if that's in your price range or it's more tailored towards your needs, then I think something like that would also be good. Regardless, I'm pretty pleased with the performance of the new Frass system and I hope that all of you guys are staying safe out there during these crazy times. If you have any questions for me on this vest, you can let me know in the comments down below. If you have some more technical questions, I would recommend just going and checking out their website for what these things are technically rated to. And then if you have any sizing questions or concerns, there's actually a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get a vest and it doesn't fit you, you can exchange it with no cost. So that's all that I had for today. If you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single Sunday. As always, thank you all for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.